blood trail. You got to remember, um, a long time ago, before God created the heavens and the earth, um, there was man. He created man out of the dust of the earth, and um, he breathed in his nostrils. And as he breathed in man's nostrils, he formed man out of the dust. And what that means is God wanted a family. God wanted a family. And every person that lived on the face of the earth was supposed to be part of God's family. He wanted you guys to be a part of his family. And as he gave you guys to be a part of his family, he left a blood trail. It's like anything else. When you think about a blood trail, we think about, you know, when um, they're looking for somebody and, and, and uh, somebody's hurt or injured, he leaves blood and there's a blood trail we follow to find the person we're looking for. But Jesus, our Savior, left a blood trail. And he left seven blood trails that we should follow. And as we look at this, the blood trail, he says, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. See, all of us, what Adam done, all of us inherit sin because of Adam. Adam was the first man. And Adam, and God told Adam, in the garden, don't eat of the tree. Don't eat of this tree. And when Adam ate of the tree, there was a problem that happened. And see, one thing we know, what can wash away the sins? Nothing but the blood of Christ can wash away our sins. All of us have sinned. There's no one on this earth that's not a sinner. All of us have sinned sometime. All of us have sinned. There's no one perfect. The Bible says no, not one is perfect. Some people think they're good. There's no one good enough. There's no one good enough. There's not one good person. We say they're good people. There are good people, but that's the only thing they're good. But good doesn't get you into heaven. Good does not get you into heaven. So the first, we want to follow the blood trail. We're going to look at Adam and Eve. Well, we know that Adam and Eve did something. They sinned because they ate, Satan had tricked them and they ate part of the tree God told them not to eat. And so when Satan tricked them, as we look, they found themselves knowing what sin is. They found themselves knowing now what sin is. And so when they found themselves in sin and they were naked, they covered themselves in fig leaves to hide their nakedness. They covered themselves in fig trees to hide their nakedness. And we see Satan lied to them and they knew what sin was. They started, they entered into a, a, a realm that now they're familiar with sin. And they knew what sin, so they knew they were naked. And, and God was walking in the cool of the day. God was walking in the cool of the day and called out to Adam. Adam, Adam, where are you, Adam? Well, God knew where Adam was. God knows everything. But Adam, he wanted it to, 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 to come to like a father to his son. Adam, where are you? What's going on? Adam was ashamed because he knew he was naked. And he knew he did wrong. And he hid from God. God called out to him. And so what God did, when Adam answered God, God knew what, what, what happened. What happened, Adam? Well, you know, Adam, <laughs> watch this. And, and, and it's funny, when we think about this, God didn't call Eve, he called Adam. Because his man is the head. His man is the head. God called the man, because man should direct his family. But what God did, he saw their nakedness and he saw them sinning and God killed the first animal, sacrificed the first animal, shed the first blood to clothe Adam. Amen. He shed the first blood to clothe Adam. This is what God did. He killed the first animal and, and clothed Adam with the skins and shed the first blood. Yes, he did. So he set the example. It takes blood to cover the sins. Amen. So he set the first example by doing this. 
And when he told Adam, when he, when he told Adam, they were, they were kicked out of the Garden of Eden. They were kicked out of the Garden of Eden because of this, but he told Adam, this is what you do. He told Adam, from now on, you're going to sacrifice a blood lamb to me. You're going to sacrifice a blood lamb to me from now on for, for, for the forgiveness of sins. So this is what I want you to do, Adam. Not only I want you to do this, I want you to teach your children. This is what we demand now. I demand blood from you. And this is what I want you to do all the time, every year for your sins. Every time you come to me for your sins. So as Adam left the garden, him and his wife, Eve, they left the garden. They had to till for themselves. Now they had to do all the things for themselves. God told him the man he'll work hard all the days of his life now when he had it easy. All he had to do was listen to God and obey God. He had it easy. But now, now man had to go to work. That's why we work hard. Because of what Adam did. That's why we work. And so as Adam sacrificed for his sins, every time he had to come and sacrifice to God a lamb on the altar, and he taught his kids this. He taught his children, this is what you have to do. He taught his children to do the same thing. Now we see the first blood, blood trail. Now let's look at the second blood trail. Cain and Abel, his two children. Well, God, Adam taught them very well. He said, one day you're going to go out and you have to sacrifice to God. You have to do the same thing that God told us to do and, and we did. And he shed the first blood, Cain and Abel. So as Cain and Abel grew, as Cain and Abel grew, they were taught this all throughout life, that one day they're going to sacrifice to God. And they saw this over and over again. Cain and Abel. So one day they had to go sacrifice. Cain and Abel had to go sacrifice to God. We see Abel, he brought his sacrifice to God. He brought, his, he brought his lamb to God, to sacrifice to God. And Cain, Cain brought his sacrifice, but he didn't bring the blood offering that God required. He brought the best of the fruit. God is not asking for the best of your fruit. God is asking for blood, a blood sacrifice. We can't bring Buddha. We can't bring Harry Christian. We can't bring Muhammad. We can't bring none of these people. God is asking for a pure blood sacrifice. Amen. But everybody's coming and bringing other things. Amen. You can't bring nothing to God for forgiveness of sin. He requires a blood sacrifice. Amen. You can't bring him all your money, all your cars. You can't bring anything to God because he's asking for a blood sacrifice. Amen. So what Cain did, he brought his first best fruits. That's not, his, that's not God's best. God requires blood. That's his best. I don't care. You can't bring anything other than what God asked you to bring him. You, can bring any, you can't bring anything other than what God asked you to get. Cain did offer his best. He offered the blood sacrifice. Cain did. Amen. Well, guess what? God rejected Cain's sacrifice. Because he didn't act. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. Obedience is better than sacrifice. God demands obedience. People say these things, but if you don't be obedient, what does it mean? What does it mean? Obedience is greater than sacrifice. So as he, when your best is not good enough, when your best is not good enough, you can bring your best, but it's not good enough. Amen. And so obeying God right here says, 1 Samuel 15, 22, it says to obey God is better than sacrifice. We say, well, I did this for God. Well, did God ask you to do that? Did, what did God do what God saved you? Not what you think he desires. Do what God tells you to do. Amen. When God tells you to do something, you have to do it. In fact, everything be cleansed by the blood. In fact, everything should be cleansed by the blood. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. Remember that. So we're going to look to the next, number three. Number three. So, here is a, a scene in Genesis. This is Noah. 
There was a flood. And we, we know about the flood. There was a flood that killed everybody on the earth. And only Noah and his family survived the flood. Only Noah and his family, family survived the flood. But after Noah got off the ark, he made a sacrifice to God. Another blood sacrifice. After he left the ark, the first thing he did was brought his blood sacrifice to God. That's what he did. Noah and his family. So it was eight people that left the ark. Out of seven billion people on the earth, only eight people survived. Just like it was today. Seven billion on the people earth today. And pretty soon God's going to come. And only a remnant of us going to heaven. So, so I'm going to talk about this a little bit because I want to talk about this. Noah had three sons and three daughters it was, and his wife. There was eight people on the ark. But so you can see it. But I'll get into this later. But you had three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. These were the three sons of Noah. And through this line, Jesus came through one of these lines. Amen. Jesus came through one of these lines. Amen. Ham, Shem, and Japheth. He came through one of these lines. But I want to show you something here mm -hmm. so we can understand this. Where are we going? He left a blood trail through the line of Shem. That's who he came through. Jesus came through that line. Amen. So the other two sons, Ham and Japheth, he did not come through that line. He came through the line of Shem. Amen. He came through the line of Shem. So he came through the line of Shem. So there was a guy named Nimrod. And I, and, and I really want to talk about this because it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Nimrod was a mighty hunter. It's in the Bible. Nimrod is in the Bible. He was a mighty hunter. But he came through the line of Ham. That's his father. Mm -hmm. That's his father. Nimrod was the father of the African nation. Mm -hmm. That's who Nimrod was. He was the father of the African nation. Mm -hmm. The Gentile nation, he was. But, and I want to, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because Nimrod was responsible for building the Tower of Babel. Nimrod was responsible for building the Tower of Babel. Because back in those days, everybody spoke one language. Mm -hmm. That's right. Everybody spoke one language. Yes. Nimrod was responsible for building the Tower of Babel to God. And he shot an arrow up to God, and God changed everybody's languages. That's why we got all the languages of the world, because God changed their language. So as God changed their languages, we get all the nations. We get all the nations of the world. This is how we get all the nations. Because everybody that spoke Italian got with their people. Everybody spoke Hispanic got with their people. Everybody spoke English got with their people. Everybody spoke uh, French got with their people. Everybody spoke uh, 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 African got with their nations. And that's how we got all the nations of the world. Because God, when he changed the language, I couldn't talk to her. I went to people I could talk to. And so we separated. But what God did was God called out to the nations one day. God seen all the world now. The world was repopulated. So God called out. He says, who loves me? Who wants to worship me? And guess what? There was a man named, there was a man named Abraham that said, I will. Abraham was Hebrew. So if God was going to talk to him, what other language do you think God was going to speak to him? In Hebrew. So if God was going to write a letter to him, a scripture to him, what do you think he'd write it in? Hebrew. Hebrew. That's what we got in Hebrew writing. Because God spoke to him and he answered God. But he gave everybody a chance. Yes, he did. He gave the whole world just like he's doing today. And all of the languages, God says, who wants me? Amen. And he calls out to all the, the languages in the world, who loves me? And you can say in any language, I love you, God. In Italian, French. Mm -hmm. Same way. But that's what God does. This is what God does. So he said he was. Now we're going to look at the, now while we're going to look at him, we're going to look at Abraham. This is the number four. Number four. In Genesis 22, 7 and 8. Verse 7 and 8. So Abraham was supposed to, God told Abraham, I want you to sacrifice your son. I want you to sacrifice your son. Your only son. Your son whom you love. And so, and, and he obeyed, Abraham obeyed God. Abraham obeyed God. Here's another blood sacrifice. But the Bible tells us that, the Bible tells us that Isaac, his son, carried the wood. 
to the mountain where Jesus was carrying the cross. The Bible tells us that when he was about to kill his son, there was a ram in the bush, caught in the thickets. His, his, in the, with, his, with his horns caught in the thickets. Jesus had the thickets of crown on his head. So he's about to sacrifice his son, but God says, God says in the Bible, I will, I will provide myself as a living sacrifice. So God provided a ram in the bush. And Abraham didn't have to kill his son. He put the ram on the altar, which represents Christ. He put the ram on the altar. And he says, it says right here in Genesis 22, 2, it says, and he said, take thy only son, thine, thy only son Isaac, whom you love. And get thee out of the get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him a burnt offering of one on the mountain that I tell thee. Mount Moriah is the same spot where Jesus died two thousand years later on that same mountain. Mount Moriah, seven 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 meters above sea level, the same spot where Jesus would die two thousand. That's where he told him to take his son and kill him there, and that's Mount Moriah. And Jesus would die on that same spot. Same spot, just giving you a, a look at what we're looking at. Mount Moriah, where the Temple Mount is today. The same spot, that's where Jesus died, where he took Abraham. The same mountain. So we see this. We see this. Now, that was the next sacrifice. Where he put the number five. Number five. And it says right here in Genesis uh, 37, 28. And they took Joseph to Egypt. And it was in Egypt. The Egyptians, they were in, they were in Egypt. For 40 and something years, 40 and 30 years, they were in Egypt. And God told them. He said, Moses, and told them one day I'm going to rescue you. I'm going to come and rescue you out of. Moses, I want you to rescue my people out of Egypt. And Moses came and told Pharaoh. Let my people go. And Pharaoh would not let the Jews go. He would not want to. But God sent ten plagues. And finally, the last plague, they had enough. And they finally said, you can go. The last plague was, God says, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put blood. He told him, go get a lamb. And I want you to put blood on the doorposts. On the two sides and on the top and on the two sides. And when you kill the lamb, you can eat the lamb, but when you kill the lamb and you put the blood on your doorpost and kill the lamb, I'm going to pass over you. So, so when I go to the, the death angel goes to the camp, everybody doesn't have his blood. Their firstborn dies. Their firstborn dies. Remember, the firstborn has an inheritance, but the firstborn dies. So as they put the blood on the doorpost, you can see and putting the blood on the door closed. All the firstborn died. And God allowed them to leave Egypt. Because they were all in mourning. You can go. Pharaoh said, fine, I had enough. And he said, you can leave. But he put, the blood was there. And the day he did that, we call that Passover. We call that Passover. Where the, where, where the death angel passed over them. Amen. That's the day Jesus died. Nisan 14 is Passover. Same day. Same day. And so they left. They parted. God opened the Red Sea and they parted out. They left Egypt. And as they walked under the, the water, they were baptized until they got to the other side. That's all of them went through baptism. Because that was a symbol of baptism, going under the water to the other side. Six, Leviticus 16, chapter 16, verse 14. And he shall take the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his finger on the mercy seats on the eastward. And before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle the blood of his finger seven times. And we're going to talk about in the future, we're going to talk about the number seven and what it means. What they, well, God had an ark of a covenant. And they had to sprinkle the blood on the mercy seat, touch the finger on the mercy seat seven times because God was showing them that I'm on the mercy seat. 
I'm a part of the mercy seat. So God told Moses to build me a tabernacle. Tabernacle means God wants to dwell among his people. God in heaven wanted to come down to earth and dwell among us, but he needed a tabernacle to dwell in. So Moses, he had Moses, took him seven days a week to build the tabernacle and set it up. And Moses would set the tabernacle up and they would have to kill the lamb. And God acquired blood on the mercy seat. And so they built the tabernacle. And as the priest would put the, build the fire and put the, uh, cook the lamb on the fire, they would cut the, kill the lamb, take the blood and take it into the temple and put the blood on the mercy seat that God required. And as he took the blood, he would take it in there. And only the priest could go inside. Only the priest, not the people. The priest would go inside. And it was for the sins of the people. It was for the sins of the nation of Israel. And it says right here in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11 and 12. But when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things have come, he brought the greater and perfect tents, not made by the hands nor by creation. He entered once into all the holy places. By no means of the blood of the goats, but by his blood, the redemption blood. This was a symbol of Christ with the redemption blood that he would do for us. And this is a picture of the mercy seat. The mercy seat. The, the ark of the covenant where God would dwell, where no man can touch. And they had to carry it. It wouldn't, couldn't be put on a it couldn't be put on a um, a cart to be carried around. It had to be carried around. And it was sprinkled of blood on the mercy seat seven times. Showing, showing, showing to God that this is a price that's going to be paid for sin. And this is inside the temple. They had all these things inside. They had the Ark of the Covenant, the table of showbread. The menorah was there inside the temple. The menorah was there inside the temple. And God, was, God sat on the mercy seat. He dwelled in the mercy seat. And everywhere they went, they took this ark around with them, where God would be with them, and he wanted to dwell with his people. And there's a temple, and where God would be. And one day, God, when Jesus died on the cross, he rent the, the veil from top to bottom, allowing us to have access to him now. We don't have to go to the temple. We got access to him 24 7. We got access to God. We got access to the holies of holies. We go right to him in prayer. Number seven, the last one, where Jesus will come 2,000 years later and shed his blood. And we say, behold, in, in, in John 1, behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Amen. Yeshua HaMashiach. That's what we call him. The Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. We put the Lamb on the altar. Jesus laid his life down. Jesus laid his life down. And here he is. And one day, we will be with him. That's the hill Golgotha. That's Mount Moriah. The face of the skull where Jesus laid down his life for the humanity. This, we, this is what we're doing. We're following the blood trail. Because without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. Amen. You can't even get to heaven without the shedding of blood. Amen. Without knowing this, without doing, without, uh, uh, the blood covers our sin. I, I heard a pastor say once, we get to heaven, they're looking for blood. If you don't have the blood, who are you with? Mm -hmm. Jesus said at the wedding, you didn't have the right garments on. They threw them out because they wouldn't shed it with blood. Right. You got to have blood. No one can get in without Jesus Christ. And so here we are. The Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. That's why we're here today. Yeah. That's why we live. Yeah. Because one day, we're going to be with him forever. Yeah. And the only way we can get there is through the blood. Yeah. Don't try no other way. You can't work hard enough. You can't buy your way in. And he says it's free. 
All you got to do is receive it. So I'm asking right now for anyone who wants to receive the blood, the forgiveness of sin, right now, wherever you are, on YouTube, wherever you are right now, I want you to bow your head. I want you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I want you to say these words. And if you really mean this, you will be saved today. Amen. Dear Lord, please forgive me for all my sins. I believe that you rose from the grave to save me. I ask for the Holy Spirit to come into my life and me to give my life to you today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now you're welcome to the kingdom of God. You have the blood of the sacrifice of the Lamb. Now all you got to do is be obedient to God. Read your word. Read your word. Learn, and get, learn who he is. Learn Yeshua HaMashiach. Learn, know your God. And the only way you can know your God is through his word. Don't never regret this. Don't never neglect this. And you never regret this.